lot of people don't realize that Asian Americans actually have a very long history in Orange County. The history of Asian Americans, particularly in Orange County, is similar to the history of Asian Americans in the West Coast and particularly California. The Asian Americans first uh, came into the county as farm workers, um, Chinese farm workers, um, some Japanese families as well in the late 1800s. So the early history uh, of the community is the kind of labor contributions that Asian Americans made to agriculture. My brother in 1949 and my mom and my dad recall trying to rent an, an apartment and as soon as she showed up they would basically you know slam the door in her face, uh, no Japs. So it got, she got so frustrated on the phone she would just say I'm Japanese, right? And a lot of hang-ups and it, it did take its toll when you think about the emotional trauma passed on generationally because we as adults now can look at the relationship between my mom and my dad and within the family and how that trauma, even though you're trying to bear with it and gut, you know, have the, the guts to go through it, I think it did take an emotional to toll on families. More recently, um, since the 1965 Immigration Act, Asian Americans have come here as skilled workers and also through their family reunification program, which means if they had someone here, that person could sponsor a relative, um, and that really increased the population. So there's great diversity in uh, the population of Asian Americans. So Advancing Justice embarked on this project around this needs assessment because this is the fastest growing population in Orange County. But even though it is growing very rapidly and has a large presence, um, there's actually surprisingly little data um, and research done on this community, particularly specific to Orange County. One of the few reports is actually something we released just a few years ago, but that was a very data-driven report. So it took census and other numbers, and it kind of gave a numeric face to the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander communities in Orange County. And what was missing was sort of a more narrative um, analysis of um, what's, what's behind those numbers, like who are these communities, why is it so complex, why are there such disparities across um, some of the sub-communities, some of the ethnic groups, and so the report really tries to get at that by using um, interviews with some of the key leaders to really go deeper into um, why are there educational disparities or what are some of the health needs, um, what are some of the contributions of the community economically and culturally. The county at the time when we were first doing advocacy and talking to policymakers, they would be like, oh, you know, you're, you guys are a drain on us. <laughs> you know, all these refugees drain a, drain a, all this taxpayer dollars. And I'm like, no, they actually are bringing in all this economic development, all this money into the business community. You're getting all the city taxes because of these businesses. And now we can say, hey, they're bringing in billion, you know, more than 20 billions, you know, in, in revenue into your cities. So now you can't question us. So Little Saigon, when I first started going there, I was very first generation mom and pop serving, like my parents, 100% of Vietnamese clientele. Wow, to what Little Saigon is today? The Asian influence now, if you see, it's almost everywhere. There was no Asian markets growing up. Now you got almost one in every, every other mile. Kind of a thing, it's becoming like total norm. The bottom of the hill is a Korean market now. It used to be Rao's, then it became something else, Persian, now it's uh, Zion. So they contribute to the diversity of the services that are provided in the county. They've been innovative in opening different businesses that have attracted um, more business to Orange County as well as attracting tourists. What we wanted to do is collect new data um, on the contemporary conditions of Asian Americans. You know, who is the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander community in Orange County? Um, both what are the significant strengths and contributions that these communities have made? Those are often overlooked as well as some of the changing needs of the county and then how we can better address uh, some of those needs. Um, these are things that are much harder to explain with data, so we see it as a companion really to that earlier report that focused on numbers. The demographics uh, show that Asian Americans are transforming uh, Orange County. So this report is based on interviews with longtime community leaders who work in various areas, who have various backgrounds, and work with the diverse populations of Asian Americans and Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders. They wanted to disaggregate from the Asians, and they called them Native Hawaiian and other Pacific Islanders. But and 
within our community, all the community Pacific Islanders says, we don't want to be other. We don't want to be We other. didn't want them to be other either. So we automatically dropped O, N-H-O-P-I, and just start using N-H-P-I. So we understand that there are commonalities in terms of our contributions and our needs, but we also wanted to emphasize that each of these communities is distinct, is unique, and has specific needs that need to be addressed. And we need to be culturally sensitive to those particular needs. You know, cultural competency is much more than language. Mm -hmm. Cultural competency involves a cultural inclusion, which means you need to really bring in folks who um, are part of the community into the process, the service provision process, and we uh, fill that need. But it also means understanding the culture well. And you can't do that with one staff. You know, if you hire a Korean, that doesn't happen. You really need to be embedded in the community, understand the community, um, the nuances of the community. You can't teach that in a training. I'm not belittling training. Training is important. Cultural competency training is critical and it helps to a certain degree. But it's best served by folks who are embedded in the community. They do the daily work of working with the communities. They work on the ground and grassroots organizing. We want to hear from them you know, what they thought about the changing um, aspects of the community and the changing needs of the community. So we're really excited that this report um, has, besides this video, um, an executive summary that summarizes sort of the major takeaways and recommendations, um, but also a full report that goes into building sustainable communities, economic development and disparities, K through 12 and higher education, healthcare services, civic engagement and political participation, and civil rights advocacy. So there's really a unique opportunity to both get a bird's eye view of what this community is and needs, but also um, for folks who actually have very specific interests, like if you're an urban planner, or you want to know about um, housing and community issues, to be able to go deep on specific uh, chapters and really understand some of the deeper issues um, and contributions of our community. From hours and hours of interviews and hours and hours of analysis, um, the report was actually able to distill some um, very strong uh, recommendations on what needs to change um, for uh, AA and NHPI communities in Orange County. And our top recommendation at the end of each chapter is that there needs to be more data collected on Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders, but also, um, perhaps more importantly, um, ethnic specific data because when when you put all the data together, you often can't tell, are we talking about an educated second generation Chinese American, are we talking about a first generation um, refugee from Vietnam or Cambodia, um, are we talking about someone from the Pacific Islands who might be third generation um, but have very unique and different needs from the other two groups. So if you go deeper into the report, you really get to unpack and look at um, and across these different issues, what are some of those unique um, needs and recommendations uh, and contributions um, but also what are some of the common threads. So our hope with this report um, on transforming Orange County and particularly with the policy recommendations and the stories that are shared um, is really to um, educate and influence um, those who are in positions to make decisions in Orange County. Especially those who work with Asian Americans and Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander populations for them to understand a little bit more about the complexity of our communities, the diversity of our communities, how we've changed in the last uh, decade. Um, and hopefully, you know, for those who are in positions of power, whether they're elected officials, policy makers, community leaders, um, educators, researchers, advocates, these are all people who on a daily basis make decisions that affect Orange County residents and we just want to make sure that they will understand that there really is a need to understand the complexity and diversity of our population but also to understand that when those decisions are made, when research is conducted, that our communities, the Asian Americans, the Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders, um, that our unique contributions and our unique needs are actually being, being considered. Mm -hmm.